and it hits me, oh my gosh, this is that triangle. You know, there's explanation for everything that occurred in the Rendlesham Forest incident that doesn't involve aliens at all. It was completely silent. It comes right over our heads. He saw a classic flying saucer really standing in the clearing. He turned over to my father and held his hand and he looked in his eyes and he said, we're not alone. Welcome to Podcast UFO for our live show. We're live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on podcastufo.com. During the show, feel free to participate live in our chat room. And don't forget to like us on our very active Facebook page. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Martin Willis, your host. And Alejandro Rojas is coming right up with the UFO updates in just one minute. Uh, our guest this evening is Albert Rosales, and uh, he has some interesting uh, research that he's done of uh, people actually seeing uh, weird, like, uh, humanoid-like beings. It's, it's really, uh, I've been reading one of his books. It is pretty fascinating, and uh, he goes right into uh, documenting them and the source. Um, so, uh, very interesting. Should be a fun show tonight. Thank you, f- supporters, for supporting the show. And if you'd like to help us out for $2 or more a month, you can just go to podcastufo.com and right on the top menu bar, all that information's right there. We are streaming live on YouTube, and uh, that's been real engaging for the chat room. It's been real nice, and uh, anyone can watch that. And that's on uh, right on our homepage, homepage or on YouTube, and uh, there's the chat room is also on our homepage. We also have our show coming up on uh, Monday. Uh, That's the Everything Else show. Uh, Next week coming up is about uh, Fukushima and uh, basically the nuclear hot seat. So that'll be uh, an interesting show, I believe. Anyway, I think we are ready to get going. Alejandro, how are you? Good. How are you, my friend? I am doing pretty good despite a few setbacks you know, I just got to stay off ladders and stuff. That's all I'm going to say. I don't really want to get into it, but, you know. Ugh, yeah. 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 I, I just can't. I want you to stay off ladders, too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, doing good. Uh, glad to be here, actually. And uh, so what is happening in the u- news this week? Well, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but our, our award to Tom DeLong at the conference, we talked about that last week, I'm sure, Um has gone viral Ooh. so uh i read i i uh counted like something like 27 sites that wrote about it today um the biggest being seen at but i think it was new york daily news uh wrote about it so it's all over the place excellent now, it, yeah it which is good and bad um <laughs> good because uh you know, CNET wrote about it, and they have a great article. It's just straightforward, giving the information uh, for the most part. But most of the sites are making fun of Tom DeLong. But it's a bit frustrating because they're they're not talking about the content of what he did, which I think is so important. You know, they're not really talking about mm-hmm. how he talked with Podesta and these generals and everything. They're just kind of making fun of him. We're talking about UFOs, and, and they may be just fast-forwarding through our video and the part about why we gave him the award and just looking at what he said because they're also kind of making fun of him uh, for staying up at night and reading UFO books and all of this sort of thing. So uh, it's good because it gets exposure, I guess, to all of this stuff and uh, and to the Congress, but it's bad in that most of them aren't taking it too seriously. That is too bad. Um, I watched... Yeah. I watched uh, after I watched your video, which I highly recommend. It's also on my sidebar; anyone can watch it. Um, I watched the uh, uh, Larry King with Tom DeLonge, uh, James Fox, and uh, Michael Shermer, and mm-hmm. that is uh, pretty interesting. So this goes all the way back yeah. to 2014 when he was talking about UFOs. And yes, he really is. A, you know, he was talking about uh, starting out in the seventh grade and um, you know his reading habits. Uh, reading everything he can find on it. He really is into the topic. You know, what I I took from your video, and I I encourage the listener to check it out, is uh, that he is claiming to be coming out with a message in a short period of time that is going to be pretty important. 
you know, I mean, it's it's got us, you know, it's, it's I, I'm curious to what it is, but, uh, you know, he seems to think that um, it's going to be a big deal, whatever that message is. And I guess, uh, you know, I have a little bit of insight, not a whole lot, and you guys will have what I have in just a second here. Um, but essentially, he's saying, uh, from what I understand from people close to him and his people, um, uh, is that it won't be him alone saying stuff. That it, it will be, uh, I guess, some credible people will be coming out about something. I don't know what. And uh, so people will say, well, why are we going to believe him? Well, I guess it won't be just a matter of believing him. Wow. Interesting. Well, we'll see. I mean, I sure hope I don't miss it when things happen. (laughs) No, I'm sure you won't. But people, the other thing, some people have been critical. Why him? They assume that we, we chose him because he's a rock star. But that is not the case. And I think I said this before. I, I feel, you know, it's a big deal. Like you said, he's been doing this for quite some time. He has been researching and looking for stuff, uh, and he will be sharing actual research. And I, I've asked other people this, and no one's giving me an answer, is uh, in the last year, you know, who else has done something uh, really significant in this field? And, hmm. and I can't think of anyone. Um and and really, when you think about how significant what he did, uh, especially with that meeting with these generals and, and John Podesta and this guy from uh, Skunk Works, nobody in ufology has ever put together or been part of a meeting like that at all. No right. UFO researcher, period, ever. So it, it's significant not just for this year, but it's significant for the field overall. And so that's why... In my humble opinion, and some may disagree, uh, the award was was well deserved. So, um, certain some people said, "Well, why is it going to a, a rock star and not a UFO researcher who's devoted devoted their life to it?" Well, um, because none of them did anything that significant this year. One, uh, two, um, you know, it's almost even look at all of the heat that Tom DeLonge is taking. Like in these stories that I mentioned. Uh, some of them are really making fun of him, and mm-hmm. uh, um, and so he's taking all of this this you know ridicule when he didn't have to. Yeah, I hope that doesn't discourage him. And- I know, me too, because it does discourage a lot of people. Um, you know, people who it discourages, uh, even myself. You know, sometimes I think, why do I do this? People are such jerks. Um, so. I, I hope it that he, he doesn't get discouraged as well. Yeah, and um, you know, I th- I don't question his intentions. I don't think he's doing it. I think he's doing it out of passion. That's uh, that's what I'm getting from. The more I look into what he's doing, I don't think yeah. he's doing it out for any other reason. Uh, and certainly, you know, it, he's got to worry about what people think about him if if he does. But one of the messages that he has is to get the information out to young people and i think that's a he's a really good tool for that because of his you know his uh, celebrity stance so i i think uh, you know i i just uh, wish all the good for him yeah me too so uh and and they he they should be sharing uh some stuff with us soon at least giving us discount codes and stuff so people can get his new non-fiction book that's coming out soon uh at a discount so I'll let you know next week. Hopefully we have something by then. All right. So what else is happening in the world of UFOs? What else is happening in the world of UFOs? <laughs> well, we've got a couple things going on. Roger has been diligently uh, writing for us for uh, MUFON. And uh, this is kind of interesting. I don't know if you watched this video from North Carolina that we posted. Uh, no, I was just going on your site um, earlier today, though I didn't catch that video but I, I mean, I do see it, but I didn't. I didn't get a chance to watch it. Mm-hmm. The witness says uh, the title is North Carolina witness unsure UFO or drone. And if you watch the video, you do see kind of this white object uh, up in the sky. Um, I guess it could be some sort of debris. It looks like it's moving, um, and it doesn't look like a drone. And it's really high. In fact, someone commented. Uh, in our comments saying, I use drones all the time, and this is way too high to be a drone. 
So this person didn't feel it was a drone. It doesn't look like a plane. I guess it could be a reflection, but it, it seems smaller than what a plane would look like. So um, it doesn't do anything extraordinary. Uh, it's just a white kind of object uh, kind of floating around up there and um, kind of at an angle. So it is an interesting video. This person said that they shot the video from their cell phone. It was in front of their house. It was a, a sunny afternoon at about 4.30 p.m. on April 2nd, 2016, so nearly a, a year ago. He says he's near a lake and a river, so they're used to seeing large birds like herons. Um, but he doesn't think this is a bird. And I don't see any flapping, so I'm not quite sure if it's a bird either. Um, they also said it could have been a drone um, because, you know, it, it moved sort of slowly, but uh, it, it's pretty large. So, yeah, people mm -hmm. have to take a look and see what they think. Yeah, it's sort of an odd shape, too. You know, it's not it's not something that you'd think a drone would be shaped like, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, I agree. So that's a weird one. Another weird one that was posted uh, by Roger just yesterday was this Pennsylvania witness reporting an unusual unusual lights beaming to the ground. So uh, this person who says they sleep pretty heavily uh, was woken up uh, a couple times recently. Um, the first one was about 1.30 a.m. And this was recently ah, I november can't see november 15th yeah there you go november 15th so this one's kind of funny uh woken up by the dog because the dog seemed to be freaking out and uh there were beams of lights in her backyard and uh the dog was barking she couldn't figure out what it was and um there was some sort of large light that this seemed to come from a huge bright round light so this happened again a few days later, um, or actually in January, where woken up in the middle of the night and uh, these lights were beaming in the backyard. So uh, then uh, the witness noticed that they had been bitten by something, presumably the dog. So the dog must have been freaked out enough that uh, the dog bit its owner to wake her up. And um, so, yeah, kind of a weird story outside of Philadelphia. Yeah, it really is. Uh, there's a nice graphic with that, too. Uh, it's too bad. I mean, it, it, she just didn't think to get it, um, you know, get it filmed or pictures or something. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that graphic, I made that a while ago, and I've used it a few times. Um, it is actually a depiction of, like, Rendlesham, if you were in the forest at some point. Um, that's mm -hmm. what that originally I made that for. But it works for this because it shows a a big round white light beaming a beam down to the ground. And, of course, we hear these stories uh, in Rendlesham. Um, also, you know, Lee Spiegel sighting and others where, you know, these objects mm -hmm. beam a light down uh, at people. So very strange stuff, I would say. And also, um, I was talking earlier about our guest this evening, uh, Albert uh, Rosales, who wrote a you know, one of the books he wrote was uh, early um, sightings from uh, 1 AD to I can't remember exactly when, but somewhere uh, in ancient you know history, there's a talk about a, a a white ball beaming down lights. So this is probably nothing new. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, I'm trying to think of some ancient story that that was in, but I don't have any. But, uh, yeah, who knows? They could be, have been flying around quite a bit, beaming people's feet for some reason. No, you right. know, it's kind of funny because uh, someone posted a story, uh, and I've thought about this before, too. Uh, what if we found a planet and the planet was more primitive than we are? Mm -hmm. And it's, what would we do? And I think what we would do is we probably would observe them and if they were very primitive compared to us, we might even, you know, kidnap one or abduct one and check it out and then put it back. Or uh, if if the scientists were more unscrupulous, which is possible, I hope they'd be wiser than this, they might even take one and, and cut it up just to check it out. So, I mean, 
it's just funny to think about it from that perspective, especially when we get closer and closer to be able to send vehicles to um, great distances, like the breakthrough uh, initiative where they want to send these these little parasails, little uh, mi- or mini things, mm-hmm. yeah, mini things to the um, nearby solar systems to check them out. Uh, if we're going to, you know, cut anything up, we should mutilate one of their cows if they have any. <laughs> yeah, we may just do that. May think, well, we can't mutilate the people, so let's mutilate one of these creatures that they eat. Now, this is really an interest. I mean, I would really like to get into this topic because it's really fascinating to me. And you know, I think about uh, would we present ourselves? You know, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, why? Why don't, uh, if they are UFOs and they right. are, you know, visiting us, why don't they present themselves? What would we do? Would we want to, you know, disturb their culture and everything by uh, saying, hey, we're from another planet and they're, you know, they don't even know what a planet is or, you know. And if they were primitive enough, uh, you know, we wouldn't even bother because we wouldn't see the need, I don't think, um, especially mm-hmm. if they didn't even have their own language. They just kind of grunted. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily have a need to to share any information, nor would we necessarily know how. So, I mean, yeah, it is kind of funny because even in today's world, if we were to come across a primitive um, culture, we would probably treat them much the same way. Uh, people report, you know, being treated by extraterrestrials, namely abductees. I mean, it's kind of um, funny that uh, people think it's kind of far-fetched, the abduction stories, but there are so many people that say they're having these experiences. And, and yeah, what they're reporting being done to them is probably what we would do to uh, a civilization that we ran across. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting to think about, I think. Yeah. But also another thing we I mean, I know that I always do it or I have to always stop myself is uh, thinking that they would think in the way that we think, mm-hmm. you know, oh, and, right. Good point. Yeah. We can't even we don't even know what their philosophies are or evolutions or anything. But uh, yeah, I like to say, you know, with humans, there's often many humans where we don't know why they do what they do. So for uh, sure. it would make sense. We wouldn't understand you know, necessarily what the motivations would be for an extraterrestrial uh, civilization. Right, righto. All right, well, hey, we went a little bit over, but that was cool. It's been a great discussion, as always. All right, well, wonderful to talk to you again, my friend, and we'll talk to you next week. All right. Okay, thanks a lot. Hang in, everyone. We'll be right back after this quick music with our guest, Albert. Albert, how are you? Hello, I'm here. How are you? Good. You remember to you un- unmute your mic. Yes. <laughs> how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, I started reading one of your books. I thought it was uh, actually really fascinating. It looks like you go into some really deep detail. You source your uh, the uh, witness accounts and things like that. Uh, so, uh First of all, let's uh, talk a little bit about you. Who are you, and uh, what got you interested in this topic uh, in the beginning? Well, you know, I had uh, my own experiences myself when I was a kid. I I was born in Cuba. I migrated to the United States back in 1966. And uh, when I was a child in in Cuba, I I had a couple experiences that back then— I couldn't relate to what they were to UFOs. I could. I'll, I'll mention one. I was sitting outside with my parents and some other neighbors, and suddenly something flew over the across the street that looked like a big egg with lights, and no one knew what it was. They somebody yelled out it was the Yankees, the Americans. Okay, because you know back of Cold War. Anyway, the thing flew over the house. I ran back to the backyard and. It hovered. I stood under it for a while, and before I knew it, it, it was gone. And I don't. Rem- it, it was late, and, and that's it. I I didn't remember seeing it leave. And then uh, after that, I, I we lived in Spain for a little bit, then came to the U.S. 
uh, for some reason, I was o- always attracted to uh, weird stuff, uh, phenomena, not UFOs directly, but different stuff, you know. I, I started reading a lot about the Devil's Triangle, all the early books that came out on uh, UFOs. And then I, um, I joined the Navy. And back then I was, uh, you know, 19, maybe 18. And that was in 77. And back then, they published a UFO magazine called Saga UFO Report. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was subscribed to it. And I I, I got the magazine up in uh, Great Lakes in Chicago. And they uh, they called me in to the uh, the naval chief, uh, chief petty officer, <laughs> as you say. And they called me in the office, and they, they wanted to know why did I like to read this subject, and, you know, about this subject. And... Uh, a little interrogation there, which I thought it was kind of funny, and they prohibited me from uh, receiving that magazine again uh, at really? the uh, Great Lakes. But anyway, after that, I uh, I've been working law enforcement now for over 32 years, local. I'm already retired soon, hopefully, and for some time now, I've been compiling an anthology of uh, encounters with uh, UFOs and mostly entities or what they call humanoids from uh, all over the world. I have been, I gather material from published sources over the internet. People contact me, uh, researchers uh, send me material from other countries. I translate a lot of it, uh, exchange material, and I have uh, compiled now over uh, almost 19,000. Uh, I have summarized almost uh, 19,000 cases, mostly involving uh, encounters with uh, all types of uh, humanoids, all types. Wow. And and other type of incidents, too. I I have uh, 15 volumes published already. All right. I'm hearing a tapping, just to let you know. That was my foot. I'm sorry. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 15 volumes. That's uh, that's that's amazing. and the one you sent me is your latest one, and that goes uh, 1 AD uh, forward to... Well, it actually, actually goes before 1 AD, but the publisher thought I should put 1 AD, because, yeah. but it goes before that, and it goes up to 1 AD to, uh, I believe, 1880, 1899? Yeah. Yeah, I think I that's think. right. So yeah. uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of fascinating because you, uh, you're, you're getting material. It's not just from the Internet. Are you getting, uh, you know, I was thinking there's probably so many um, early books, especially all through Europe. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of accounts um, which will never hit the Internet, you know. Oh, no, yeah, there's there's a lot of material there that I have gotten from uh, researchers, let, let me, let's say from Poland, Finland, uh, Spain, and and these cases are, you will never read about them anywhere else. They, uh, and many of the Spanish cases, I, I since I speak Spanish, I could translate it myself. Uh. Now, I, ha- I had another researcher from Ukraine, uh, and he sent me a lot of material, too. He helped me translate a lot of the cases. But there's cases there from all, uh, all over the place. Uh, currently, I'm translating a couple of books right now, like this one from Mexico. And uh, there's, like, every day I, I enter new cases into my database. I see. Okay. Uh, someone's trying to make a call. Unfortunately, um, it, it's not allowing me to add the call to this, which would just uh, basically hang up on our guests. So uh, I'm okay. sorry. We'll just keep continuing here. Uh, so uh, in the accounts that you're reading, uh, I noticed a lot of them had sort of like religious connotations. Um, do you think that's just how people interpreted them, uh, of what they were seeing at the time? I think so. A lot of the uh, like the um, so-called uh, Marian apparitions or the Virgin Mary apparitions back yeah. in the, especially the one in the, in the early uh, 18th century, 19th century, the Fatima in Portugal. Uh, some of these beings are act act very similar to modern day accounts of humanoids and and supposedly extraterrestrials, like uh, some of the being seen at uh, in Portugal back in 1917 and 16, nine, from 1915 to 1917, were similar to modern day de- descriptions of humanoids. I'm not talking about the the small greys with the big eyes. No. The, the the greys are seem to be like a new uh, lake latecomers to ufology. I, I call them latecomers anyway. 
But uh, a, a lot of those, uh, there's definitely a relation to a relationship between the uh, the Marian apparitions or the Virgin Mary apparitions uh, and and UFOs. Right, right. I believe seems to be seems to be quite <clears throat> uh, quite a bit. Um, yeah, and what I was just reading today um, in your book, there were a number of them that uh, related to that. Uh, so, uh, were there ever any through all the the beings you looked, uh, you know, through information on? Were there any uh, like unusually sized, like really large or really small, um, you know, beings that people? I didn't see any so far, and I just wondered about that. In that early book, uh, the one from uh, you don't see too many uh, variants on, on humanoids there because. This is our from uh, cases from back in the you know 1500s, 1400s, 1300s, and they interpreted things different. Than, you know, and and but in the later years we have humanoids of all sizes. You had the tiny ones seen in Malaysia back in the 70s. I was sent an account from Spain from 2014, from directly to me by the the witness. Uh, him and some friends they they encountered in a, a humanoid that was. He said it was well over five meters tall. Tall, wow. uh, dark, a so dark figure. It's like figure. 15 feet or close to 15 oh, yeah. feet. Yeah, a little more than that. So we have them all sizes, the, the description of all sizes. Wow. wow. And uh, what is uh, what is some of the really unusual ones? I mean, I was reading today where they saw like them dressed when it looked like uh, glass and, you know, I mean, all different types of weird stuff. And well, uh, people that are green and... Uh, they lose their green color later in life, and you know. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> there, believe it or not, there's been reports of little green men, which everybody makes fun of. But right. yeah, there's been people that claim they've seen, and we're talking about cases that have been investigated by the different researchers, not people that you know that come on in the internet and send you the account, but or the case. Uh, there's many cases. One that really interests me are that when. Uh, people encounter different type of humanoids apparently working together, either inside the ship if they've been abducted or next to the ship. Uh, I know a case in France, which is oh, I always found it fascinating, with uh, a couple that were parked in a you know wooded area. And they were out there necking, I believe, and then they saw an object land nearby, a big dome shaped, uh, shaped uh, thing. And it landed uh, a hatch, a big doorway became visible and first they, they, there was like three or four little of the small size humanoids come out not exactly grays they were, they were they had the large head but their their eyes were more human like and after that two tall figures came out and these two figures were like tall blonde hair long blonde hair silver uh, outfits and these were like the what you will call the nowadays uh, Nordic type entities. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the most interesting part, after these two came out, another figure came out to the, to the door and stood there. They thought it was standing there either a guard or just standing watch. Or he said he looked like a big hairy ape, okay, and then just sat there by the, the door of the object. And now this <clears throat> case is interesting. After these, uh, they left. They, they went back. The, the same way they came out, they went back into the ship and then took off. Now, at a, at a nearby farm, another uh, uh, the farmer and uh, his daughters heard noises and saw lights. And uh, after that, they found some footprints in the in their yard that that were different sizes. Which you know, the the researcher that uh, sent the case think it was directly related to the incident. Wow! Wow, that's strange. independent independent confirmation there. Yeah. Um, has uh, has uh, your later books ever uh, kind of delved into, uh, you know, other types of cryptoids besides the humanoids? <laughs> or is, do you try to say, stay, uh, I saw a couple of things like that, but do you try to stay mostly with what people are claiming are, are humanoids? I, I try to stay within the humanoid aspect of the matter. I do include a lot of the uh, Bigfoot type uh, encounters, spe especially if they're like... Uh, the more interesting encounters which involved Bigfoot that able to either have to speak telepathic, telepathically to the witness or Bigfoot type creatures that vanish or they're shot at and 
nothing happens to them or they disappear in a bowl of light. There's many cases like that. And I include a lot of the other entities like little people, fairies, uh, mermaids, uh, centaurs, uh, wolfman, a lot of these cases. I, I, you know, I, I can't include all of them, but it's already this is like a chronology of over, uh, like I said, nineteen thousand cases. Wow, wow. Which, which not all of them are I could include in the book. There'd be just too many of them in the books. Wow, interesting. Hey, uh, we are uh, Albert. We're having a problem with buffering on YouTube for some reason, and my internet signal is really strong, so I can't understand it. So I would like to shut your. Uh, go ahead and shut your camera off, if you would, please. I'm just going to try to do uh, try to do that on this end. Shut it's, it off, okay? Yeah, shut your camera right off, and uh, I'm going to just try to do a couple things on this end, and we'll continue. Um, you can go ahead and continue uh, um, talking, though. I'd like to. Uh, I almost want to start out by asking you what's the weirdest thing that anyone said, but it seems like there's so many weird things. So why don't it's, you go into some of the uh, some of the the kind of really strange ones that people have talked about? Let me, I, I was preparing a, uh, some of them that were sent directly to me by the witnesses. And I'll find some for here for you guys now. Uh, these are like people that I spoke to over the phone or uh, they were uh, mostly in communication with me, mostly in uh, email or, or phone communication. I have met uh, witnesses only in my local area, which I have been able to investigate. Let me uh, bring up this file here. In your local area, really? Wow. Yeah, I have some cases here, which uh, several. Uh, some of them including supposedly uh, abductions and, and stuff. Here, I'm here in Miami, uh, South Miami. Oh, you're um, in Miami. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here's one, uh, an interesting case that was sent to me directly by a witness from Connecticut, a place called uh, Nagatuck, N-A-U-G-A-T-U-K. Uh, back uh, back in 1970, she was a six-year-old girl, uh, young, and then one night she woke up all of a sudden. Uh, she was hearing her name being called, and you know she got up and uh, for some reason she felt compelled to go to the front door, and uh, she knew for some reason she knew that she had to go outside and meet somebody. Uh, it was funny. She had a little box that she carried with her, like a suitcase, and she packed it and walked out with some socks and, and panties. She walked downstairs and through the front door. Oh. And this is a funny thing. She she said she walked through the front door. She did not open. Uh, and she didn't thought it, she didn't think at the time that it was, that was a strange thing. They just thought it was you know just walk through the door. <laughs> she said she walked she walked <laughs> she walked down the driveway. And turned right and walked up and with her head down and all of a sudden she came up to a, a, a big pair of feet she says attached to some legs she looked up and there was a, uh, a figure of a man it was she said it to her it looked like a giant silver man made out of silver shiny and uh, she she somehow she she knew there was no danger somehow she knew that I mean, uh, he had. She she looked at it, and uh, he had no clear features or anything like that. So this is when she asked uh, the the entity, whatever it was. She goes, "Are you God?" And she thought it was God. Uh, maybe a little girl. She couldn't think of anything else. Uh, she said that the entity laughed. She heard her laughed, a laughter in a warm, amused way, and then responded, "No, child, I'm not God, and and you can't stay here." Tell him she couldn't stay there. He then turned her around and swatted her gently on her behind and told her again, you must go home, Kathy. She, he said he had it before uh, she left. It's not time. Hmm. Obediently, uh, she turned around and marched right back home uh, and went inside the house inside of her house in the same manner that she had, uh, you know, exited right through the door and back into her bed. Uh, you know, I always found that case, you know, very interesting, amusing. I wish I could have met the witness in person, but Connecticut, I'm here in Miami. Sometimes I, I don't have the time, you know, but to go in person. But I, I, I yeah. found it very uh, in, an intelligent person and reliable. Right. Wow. Wow. Um, so, and, and have you, besides these people here, have you gone so far as to 
actually interview people like say by phone or Skype or something like that um, to get someone's account and uh, has that ever been an option for yeah. you? Oh yeah, I've done a lot of phone interviews. Uh, a lot of, done a lot of local cases. Uh, back in the 1990s, 96, 95 when they had that the chupa, I don't know if you heard the chupacabra craze uh-huh. that originated in Puerto Rico and somehow we, we started getting cases here in South Florida. I actually went out to a couple locations with uh, the late uh, researcher, Bihilio Sanchez Josejo. He passed out, pa- passed away uh, last year. Anyway, we went to a location where we, I spoke to, um, it was like a, a nursing home, and they had a big yard with some uh, animals. They had some goats there, and they found some of the goats dead. Uh, they had, like, holes on their necks. And, and, and one of the ladies that was uh, looking out the window at night, um, uh, Claimed she she saw some kind of a creature outside, and and the creature was like a bipedal creature, didn't appear to have any clothing, and she looked at it and it, it jumped over the fence and vanished. Now I, I was there, and I saw one of the dead goats. Now the funny thing, the uh, the goat had a a couple of holes in the neck. I bent down, I pushed. I touched it. I don't know why. And then, then something started leaking out of the hole. It looked like green fluid. Oh. It wasn't blood. It was something green. <laughs> I've never seen it before. Now, uh, me and Virgilio, never, we never thought of uh, picking up the the carcass or doing anything with it. Somebody else came in a pickup truck and took the dead goats away. And we don't know where it happened to them. Wow. Which I found it very... <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Just yeah. Uh, just watch the noise on your side, if you would, please. Um, yeah, and, and my dog is over here. I'm trying to get her out. Oh, oh I see. I can't see yeah. you now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, so, okay. how many uh, of these stories, uh, even going way back in, in the past, uh, a percentage-wise, just kind of a guess from you, uh, but had an association with UFOs involved, um, or some type of you know ball of light or whatever. Um, where there were humanoids that actually, uh, you know, either turned up or, um, or actually, uh, you know, some type of association with that. Oh, I believe, uh, most of them, I will say maybe 80%. There were either some kind of UFO sighted. They were sighted in the UFO next to the UFO or near the, near the UFO or, or in the general vicinity where UFOs have been seen. Now there's, uh, uh, either a ball of light or a, a saucer or a triangle shape, whatever type of UFO. But most of these cases deal with a uh, UFO encounters also. Wow. Yeah, I didn't. That's that's really something. And um, have you yourself had a UFO encounter? Yes, I have. Like I say, back in Cuba, the one I mentioned at the at the beginning. Could yeah. You, can you, um, I'm sorry. Can you excuse me one second? Sure thing. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's one all right. Moment. That's all right. Uh, yeah, we're used to uh, things happening on this show, so um, I think he has to move his dog or something like that. So um, if anyone in the chat room has uh, questions, I will try to uh, I will try to uh, pose them to our guest tonight. If you want to put them, okay, I'm back. I'm back. back. I'm very sorry. Okay. All right, no problem. And uh, I, I uh, when I was in the Navy, uh, I was. Uh, in, in Europe a couple times in a what they call Mediterranean cruise. Uh, I, I had a top secret clearance. I was a radio man on board a, uh, a destroyer tender. And one day we were in, the, in Puerto, uh, Puerto de Mallorca in the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean. Uh, we had a, we stopped there a lot. And one morning I was up on the, on the deck, the ship, and I looked up at, uh, I had, there were some hills and beyond the city and I saw two like silver aircraft they were not moving they were just hovering there and I, I grabbed uh, one of the um, uh, binoculars I looked at it uh, I looked at them and they, they just stay there they, I couldn't tell the shape too well because they were very far away and then all of a sudden they just moved out and disappear uh, this is one that, while I was in the Navy and uh I, uh, I have other encounters. Mostly when I was, uh, you know, a child, I had a, 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 some some weird encounters. Maybe some of them were not related to UFOs. Maybe to other kind of entities. But I remember one time in uh, walking the, to the hallway in my house, there was a mirror. On the hallway, I looked at the mirror, and there was a, 
a man in the mirror staring at me. Uh, he looked like he had a beard. And to me, he thought it was, I thought he was wearing some kind of helmet that looked like one of those Spanish uh, conquistador type of helmet back in the, the one the Spanish used to wear. And I remember, this is in Cuba, so I remember the Spanish were in Cuba a lot. And who knows, maybe what I saw was a ghost. I'm not sure. There was definitely nobody there with me behind me. So, <laughs> Wow. Uh, now, uh, a lot of these uh, beings seem to communicate. And what, what would you say... Um, um, it was a percentage or were there a lot of cases where there was some type of communication I, when I was reading through I saw where there were unknown languages and things like that but uh, uh, yeah a lot of the a lot of the communication is done telepathically yeah they speak into the mind of the witness or the witness hears them in their mind and usually they speak in in a language that the witness can recognize or if this let's say if you're in Spain and they'll speak to you in Spanish. You're in uh, the U.S., they'll speak to you in English. Uh, it all depends where you're at, but they, they do mostly communicate telepathically. There's many. There's been cases also where they speak, you know, like we're speaking now, uh, mm -hmm. but you can hear them. And sometimes there are others that do not communicate. Or they either they speak among themselves in an unknown language. Or, it, it all depends. It's just... Uh, depends on the encounter. It's just many different types of encounters. And I think there's many different type of, uh, of humanoids or entities. Right, right. I mean, it seems to be. Uh, what about um, how early has anyone described something that may sound like a, a gray, you know, basically a gray early alien? Okay, if you're like a UFO historian like I am, if you look at the books, the early books, uh, Passport to Magonia by Jax Ballet yeah. and uh, the humanoid uh, Charles Bowen, uh, if you read the accounts there, none of those accounts mention a, a human or a being that resembles a gray. Mm -hmm. Now, people say, well, there, there's people that have been abducted back in the 50s and even the 40s that describe uh, gray type entities. Yeah, a lot of these people are remember those encounters but they remember those encounters here now in the 90s or in the 21st century when they're either hypnotically regressed or they all of a sudden they have a they remember the encounter uh i will say the great type humanoids were seen like in the in the late 70s maybe 1975 on 76 uh, uh huh wow okay so yeah, I wondered about that, you know, and, and you mentioned just, a, I don't know, a little bit ago about the like the tall whites or something that kind of falls along that line. The uh, Nordic type. The entity, Nordic type, Tall yeah. blonde, yeah. Yeah. Are there, uh, are there uh, any type of, uh, you know, consistencies in some of the sightings through, um, through different areas, you know, geographically? Or um, I know you said there's so many different kinds, but is there... Anything that uh, was sort of a trend in any type of way that you're aware of? Well, I, I know of cases that, let's say, have occurred in totally different locations. Uh, and let's say one in the Ukraine, one here in South Miami. And, and they're almost, om, almost the same to a T, the same type of incident. And I say to myself, how could they, this witnesses uh, separated by thousands of miles and by 20 years, describe almost the same thing? Uh, there's this case in South Miami, uh, back when there were only tomato fields down in South Dade, where a witness was driving down US-1 and he saw like, he described a blimp type uh, object descend over a field, tomato field. And a big, like he said, he said he looked in an elevator came down and from the object and the hatch opened and some cars started driving out. Cars. <laughs> and, and, and these cars were just drove into, into the US-1 and just drove away. And he was here dumbfounded looking at now i'm talking 1991 how many years maybe 30 years or so after that in the ukraine huh. i don't have the case in front of me a witness uh, sent a case to uh researcher anton Anfalov. he never heard of this case in south miami this, this case was only published by a uh, a newsletter here in, in, in miami and miami in miami day county back in the six, 60s I don't even know. I don't think it is even in the in the, uh, the Humcat catalog. But anyway, this witness described seeing a 
a cigar shaped object over a field and uh, uh, an elevator descended uh, from the, the bottom of the craft and cars started driving out of it. And these cars were, of course, the Russian vehicles or whatever vehicles they, they had back then at the, 91. But And then there's another car, another, another case that was told to me by a Spanish researcher, uh, J.J. Benitez. Oh, he's, I don't know if you heard about his books, but uh, from Mexico, almost the same scenario. Uh, uh, a huge object, rectangular, descends over the field, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and cars can come out of it. I mean, this this kind of case it sounds too, too high strange. I mean, is is you take it or leave it. Uh, you be your own judge. I, that's what I say. Yeah, just watch the tapping on your side if you would please. Sorry. Yeah, um, I know it's uh it's you probably don't even realize you're doing it. Um, okay, so there was a case in Australia. Uh, I believe it was Australia, where the cars were driving down the highway and they saw these beings get out of a craft that landed. And it was uh, quite uh, quite a scary case. Uh, are you familiar with that one? I, I was trying to find that, and I couldn't find it anywhere. That's a uh, case that occurred in 1993. Uh, what's the name of the witness, Kathy? I can't remember right now, but it was a scary case because the the, the the entities that were seen were l- very scary looking. They were like tall, black in color, glowing red eyes, and they didn't seem friendly at all. Uh, the, uh, this uh, witness, the main witness, there were other witnesses, but the main witness wrote a book about it, which I have. I don't have, I have no idea where it is, and I can't remember her name. But uh, I do remember the, the case that you're referring to. Yeah, and it happened in August 1993. Yeah, in yeah. Uh, in Australia. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd like to I'd like to look into that case more. There must be someone. Um, I believe at one time I tried to reach out to her, whoever the witness is, and I was not able to find any contact information. I know she wrote a book, and then, like I said, I don't have it in front of me right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm trying to find it here in my laptop right now. Oh, and that, I'm no, that's trouble. okay. Um, and. Someone wanted to know in the forum, there's some questions in there. Um, had anyone actually reported anything with any creatures like with wings or something like that, really strange like that? Oh, yeah, many cases. Uh, winged hu- What they call winged humanoids uh, or flying humanoids. They're all over the place now. Uh, they, I mean, they were not that common back in, back in the day in the 50s. And then we got uh, what happened in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, the Mothman. Oh, okay. There, the one of some of the first winged humanoids that were seen there in the seventies. Not so much, but there are many, you know, you know, cases here and there. Mm-hmm. They seem to come uh, of age in the in the late nineties and the two thousands. A lot of winged humanoid type cases, even many of them related in connection to UFO encounters and all that. Yeah, many of them. I have many of those in all my uh, in my books and my files. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And. Uh- I know you talked earlier about abduction, or I heard you say a little bit about it. Were there a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm saying back in history, were there encounters where people saw humanoids and then the, they were taken somewhere? Has that, was anything well, sound like an abduction? Yeah, let me tell you what, hap- what, what would happen a lot in the Middle Ages. People were claimed that they were picked up by strange entities or humanoids and they were accused of being witches or warlock and then they were burned at the stake hmm. that, that happened a lot there were people in the england spain that claimed they were taken through the air by strange creatures and deposited miles away where they were and then there were the inquisition will interview them and they they would they the only conclusion they can come up with was that they were in cahoot with the devil that, that they that there were demons that did this so maybe that happened a lot in the middle ages but they were it wasn't understood and the poor people that were <laughs> abducted and then were burnt at the stake or worse wow okay yeah that's something else um and i'm just trying a couple of different things because uh i'm getting a, a message on my uh software that's saying that uh i have to it says I have too many video settings on, and I don't have anything showing right here. I just want to make sure. Video setting, okay. Yeah, and I don't have anything uh, that I am aware of up now. So uh, hopefully things will clear up 
Uh, we're still having some buffering issues. Uh, um, but uh, anyway, okay, so let's continue. And uh, a question in the uh, in the forum. I'm not quite understanding this, but I mean, it sounds kind of interesting. Have you ever heard of cases where humanoids uh, appeared to be two-dimensional? In other words, no depth, almost like a sheet of paper. I'm wondering if you meant like, kind of like what they call the shadow uh, figures or something like that. Well, they, I have heard of those. It's kind of different from a shadow figure. Uh, a, a shadow figure is some, is some, I've seen those. I've been, I have encountered them. Diff- and most of the time when you encounter one of these shadow figures, it's like the fear is un- incredible. For some reason, it's like it, you can't control yourself. But it, it looks like something like a, fi- a human shaped figure, blacker than the night blacker than the, the the room can be dark but it's darker than the room that's why you can see it incredible but there's some substance to it i mean uh, is you can see it sideways or it moves but that, some of these uh, that question the three-dimensional i have heard of cases in which people have reported uh, entities or uh, creatures that they look like flat they're like flat uh, maybe they're like a piece of paper they seem not to have any uh not to be three three dimensional, they only a couple of dimensions, uh, two dimensional. Mm-hmm. They turn around, they turn sideways, and all you see is a, a thin line. There's no depth. I, I have heard of those cases. They're not too common. But, uh, I can't think of any on top of my head right now, but yeah, I have heard of those. Wow. Um, yeah. And how about some that vanish? Do people talk about that? Yeah, all the time. That, it happens with UFOs. You're seeing right. a UFO hovering over the house, and you look up, it, it just disappears. Doesn't You don't see it fly away. It just disappears. Same thing with some of these humanoid encounters. Uh, uh, you, you might see a creature in, outside in the front yard or a creature in your bedroom that it suddenly appears there, and you, you try to get up, and all of a sudden it vanishes right in front of you. Yeah. Some of these, some of these entities are, uh, sometimes there's a flash of light, and... Some of these turn into a ball of light and just fly out the window. There's been some cases like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, do just a. Is there? I hate to ask this, but is there some music in your background? I didn't hear that earlier. Is it just in another no. room or something? You can't do anything about. I, my yeah. Let me close the door. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hold on one second. But it's far away, and I'm surprised you could hear. Hold on one second. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's fine. Yeah. All right, everyone, hang in there. He's going to be right back. Oh, someone here is a squeaky fan. That should do it. That should keep the dog out, too, I would think. Uh, and someone here is crickets. <laughs> That's something you never want to hear in a, a show of any kind is crickets. There we go. There, you're yeah. back. Okay. I, the door was open, too. Maybe there were yeah crickets outside. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. That's right. You're I'm in back. Miami. Yeah, nice yeah. and warm. Yeah. Um, so now, the, one of the things I was thinking of is, uh, you know, you hear people that, um, you know, say they're abducted today and they describe uh, the all the different types of uh, creatures that right. uh, abduct them. The grays, of course, of being the most common or what you hear the most. Then there's the reptilians and there's uh, 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 the mantis type or, you know, all these... And I'm not yeah. saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I, you know, sort of buy into any of this. I really don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about um, certain right. things like this. But do course, you, you uh, when you're looking, doing this research, do you actually, uh, you know, find those type of uh, beings? Like I said, the, the uh, almost 19,000 summaries and they're all type of beings, reptilians. I had people... I talked to a woman here locally that in person I talked to her and she said she, she was in her home and uh, encounter uh, and all of a sudden in her room a female appeared, a woman, type of alien looking but you know still human looking and what what she spoke to her all of a sudden her face changed into a, a reptilian type creature and this really of course frightened her and then the, and she kind of backed up, and then the, the this creature, whatever it was, just disappeared. But it apparently morphed into a, uh, a reptilian. But uh, yeah, I have plenty of uh, in cases of reptilians and 
all kinds. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, uh, uh, Bobby, I'm not understanding your question, so uh, rephrase that if you would. Can you describe uh, to the listener out there what your format is in your books? Because I, I really like the way it's laid out. Can you just describe how you how you present sure. an encounter? Here's, here's one of the books right here. Uh, this is a new one on encounter, 1970, 1974. It deals with cases from the 1970 and 74. Uh, I, there's like an anthology, a chronology. It's, it's like a chronology of cases. I start from uh, 2015. I have worked work my way all the way, way down to ancient history. And what I do, I try to uh, I try to um, include as much detail as possible. I mean, many cases there were there were just brief, you know, anecdotes or information, but many of them do have a lot of detail, and I try to include that. Whenever possible, I try to include a, an image in the book also. And, and you know, a, a lot of the, the ones with more, with more details are obviously cases that have been uh, investigated by uh, researchers, you know, worldwide. And uh, like I say, many of them are translated. But all, all these books are like an anthology, a chronology of, uh, of events through history or mm -hmm. From like I said, 2015. I haven't collected anything after 2015. I mean, uh, for, for the year 2016, I haven't collected anything. But I, uh, but uh, 2015 all the way down, and, and that's why I have so many books, 15, uh, 15 volumes. I mean, they're not that big, but there's a lot of information in them. Yeah. They're well, yeah. They're you know 300 over 300 pages. All of them are over 300 pages. Oh, well, that's that's a uh, that's a yeah. fair size. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so. Uh, there was a question I'm trying to understand in the, I'm asking, uh, Bobby, rephrase your question in the, uh, in the chat room. I, I couldn't understand what you were saying. Um, let's see. I, I found your Australian uh, cases uh, back in August 8, 1993. The, the lady's name was Kelly Cahill. Okay, that's right. Yep. Kelly Cahill. She was uh, driving with her husband and three children. They saw a round, a huge... Wrong craft hovering over the roadway, and uh, there were lighted windows. They were they saw entities in the windows. Then they, uh, it, there were these entities were like almost seven feet tall, black in color, with glowing uh, red eye, fiery yeah. red eyes, and it, it turned out to be in a you know an abduction scenario type of thing. So, a yeah. very frightening case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what is this? Is a uh, also in the in the forum a question. What is your opinion on the link between sleep paralysis disorders mistaken for alien encounters? Well, you know, I suffer from that sometimes, and there is a possibility because sometimes you have like a, what you call that you have that sleep paralysis and and you can't move. But most of the time, most of the time when you have that sleep paralysis, you don't um, you don't see anything. You don't see any figures or creatures or anything like that. Rarely, when you when you have that waking dream that you wake up and then you you think you saw something, maybe that's some people think they saw some kind of entity in the room. I think maybe in some cases it could be that, yeah. But if you see something substantial that stays around in your room for, and you're completely awake, you know you're awake. Maybe you're awake, but you're you're unable to move. You're paralyzed for some reason. You've been paralyzed, but you're you know you're awake. Your eyes are open. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's sleep paralysis. That's something different. That's like what what I call um, uh, bedroom visitations by you know unknown entities. Yeah, uh, my son has sleep paralysis now and then, and he said that he actually thought he saw like some type of dark figure, and and you know, but um, and I, yeah. I do I have heard of something like that, but I don't think uh, I don't think that's the case for everyone, you know that. Uh, especially when they're you know daytime um, people are wide awake and you know there's some abduction encounters uh, encounters like that also uh, driving and you know a whole, whole different uh, oh yeah that'll you be know. yeah you when you're wide awake and, and forget it that won't be um, can that cannot be connected to uh, sleep sleep paralysis and uh, I saw the question from the young lady in the forum she says she saw a, a hooded type uh, being uh, black yeah for some reason, that type of entity is reported a lot also. Really? Related yeah. to, and uh, mostly in cases where th it appears in the bedroom. I don't know if it's evil or not. You know, some people think it is. Ah. Uh, I'm not here to judge. I don't know. Yeah, it does sound evil, though, doesn't it? 
<laughs> yeah, it looks evil. <laughs> yeah. But uh and have you ever researched the possibility of portals, you know, openings um like yes. at the Skinwalker Ranch? A lot of cases that there were entities. Uh, I, I I I was sent a, a case from um, up in uh, in the west, uh, and maybe I think it was uh, Arizona, maybe or, or California. I'm not sure. Uh, where this uh, hiker saw like he looked up, he looked like a portal hovering in midair. He said it like a window. He looked up, there was like a window in midair, and out of the window, just like the, the Skinwalker Ranch, this, this creature dumped out. A Bigfoot type creature. Now I think portals or what I call interdimensional pathways are used by some a lot of these entities or humanoids to go or travel or go there or visit here. Uh, I, I think that that's that's my theory. I'm not saying this, this that's what it is or it's true. That maybe they use uh, other dimensions to travel, interdimensional travel. Maybe not even intergalactic travel, maybe interdimensional. Right, right. Well, I mean, there's always uh, there's always thoughts about that. Uh, you know, there's uh, Paul Eno, who I had on my other show the other night. You know, thinks Paul Eno, that, yes. Yeah, yeah, he thinks there there's uh, you know there's information about or there's some possibility of you know uh, different multiverses that are causing this to happen. So there's all Definitely kinds them. of. All kinds a lot of, of dimensions, many different dimensions, and some of these entities are actually supposedly told their their witness or their their abductee that they do come from other dimensions or other dimensional planes. And I remember the uh, those um, that encounter with that doctor in Maine uh, back in 1975 with a man in black that visited his home. He hmm. t he was told that they were from another dimensional plane. And uh, maybe really? maybe, wow. maybe a lot of these entities are from other uh, dimensions. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's get back to some of the other, you know, really weird encounters. And um, but before that, were there any encounters besides the uh, beings in, that were green, where the uh, brother uh, died and the uh, the the uh, sister kind of grew out of her green state? turned normal but were there any other cases that the uh the entities whatever they were stayed around for a long time you know what there has been cases like that in which uh let's say uh, some a stranger suddenly shows up to this town or a small village or and these people are uh, either strange and they're kind of unusual and they hang around for a while and they do things that not you know they're totally weird i mean uh and and at the end maybe they they leave and and they uh, people realize that, that they were dealing with some some uh maybe aliens or uh, entities from another location these these cases are, are really hard to categorize uh, or or uh, summarize because they 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 uh some of these are like our years, you know, they go from uh, they they and span years, like from maybe ten years to twenty years. I know a, a case like that from Spain, where they they had contact with this person that at the end it turned out to be an alien or uh, somebody from another planet claiming that from be from another planet or another another universe. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, someone wanted to know: Do you track the number of different let's just call them species or creatures i don't track them i just uh summarize them and i uh put them in, i i write them down and uh, but i don't keep track of any specific species i i look at the type of humanoid uh, but i don't classify them as different species i only classify the type of encounter like you know a b c d e but not the type of species oh yeah I, let's let's talk know. about your a your the encounters go ahead if you would can you go through that list do you have that in front of you sure uh, uh, I and have is like this, type a is this yeah. something that you made up or i know it no 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 this is from uh, uh the researchers heineck that's yeah. the heineck uh and they're different one now there's different uh type of uh uh but this is the old system uh that i keep i still use i only i added a couple things but uh type a 
is when you see a human, uh, an object, a, fl a UFO, flying saucer, or a triangle, whatever type of object, either floating or flying or landed, and you see the humanoid or an entity inside the object, you know, either in a cabin or through a window or a dome, clear dome, that's type A. When the humanoid is seen inside the object, he doesn't come out, he doesn't walk around. Okay, that's a very simple case. Then you got type B, B like in Bravo, when there's an, an object that's seen on the ground, lands, and the entities come out, go walk around, collect samples, or soil, whatever they do, and then they, they're seen to go back right inside the object and take off. Direct, direct connection there to the object, so they, that's type B. And then there's C, and when they, there's an object in a field or wherever, and nearby there's some creatures or humanoids, Perform, performing whatever type of uh, whatever they're doing. They're nearby. Now the witness did not see them go directly back to the object. The witness leaves. So there's a relation there, but not clear. So that's type C. And then there's type D, which is not so clear either. Uh, when there's a, a, let's say a UFO flap, when there's a lot of sightings in the area and and somebody sees a strange creature in the field, but there's no UFO around at all whatsoever. But there's been a lot of UFOs in the area, uh, the, let's say the day before or the week before. So they relate that to maybe this entity or this creature is related to those UFOs. And after that, we have E, which is very common nowadays, which is an entity or a humanoid seen completely without uh, any craft or not in the company of a UFO or a ball of light or anything like that. Maybe that's one, uh, a human or entity that shows up in your room in the middle of the night or you see in your backyard or you see when you're out in the, in the woods hiking, anywhere. And they're obviously alien type or creature or humanoid, but you don't see them with a, uh, in a UFO or in a flying saucer or anything like that. And these are very common. Uh, after that, we have the, uh, the abduction, which uh, he, that was one of the last ones that Heineck... Uh, Included there, G, like in golf, is that's when the, like it says, uh, the person is abducted. They see an object or driving down the, <clears throat> excuse me, isolated road, and the, the vehicle stopped, and then they, maybe they have a missing time episode, like uh, Bud Hopkins, late Bud Hopkins, his books. Uh, and then they wake up, and they're in a different location, and they, they go through hypnotic regression, and it turned out to be they, they have been abducted for whatever purpose. And that's the type G. And then there's the uh, H, which is for cases of like like Roswell and the alleged uh, crash of objects or UFOs, a recovery by the government or military. And there's also a couple more, uh, which is F. Yeah, it's like a psychic type of cases, which is maybe you see an object hovering and you feel mental communication from the object, but you don't see a humanoid or creature. There are some cases like that. I mean, they they put those cases in the F. They can, I guess, they didn't know what to make them. And then they have a. This is this is one I I made myself. Type X, which is a very weird type of case with a lot of different type of scenarios. Maybe the disappearance of the witness, or or maybe even the death or of the witness or somebody. I I, I turned those that are X really like 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 the X file type of cases. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. see where that works. Um, so uh, there, uh, there's someone on the message board that asked this question, and I'm really interested in this. I'd love to actually do a show about it sometime. Is okay. the uh, the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter? Um, Wait, did, did you look into that in uh, in Tennessee? Is that any? I mean, I'm sorry, Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it, I. Then really, I, I know about the case a lot. It's one of the most famous, you know, uh, cases in the 50s, 1955. There was a flap of, uh, of encounters, mostly in that area there, Kentucky, Ohio, and and that area in the Pennsylvania Midwest. But uh, the Kelly Hopkins bill case is definitely one of the most uh, high, strange, or incredible cases ever. And I, it is cataloged in, in my book. I, I do have it summarized. And it's very uh, convincing. I think... For me, it's a very convincing case. Yeah, why don't you, why don't just for the person out there that has not ever heard of this, um, why don't you kind of go into exactly what happened or, uh, you know, purportedly happened? 
Well, uh, this is in 1955, I believe it was August. Uh, uh, there was a family in, um, in a place called, uh, it was near Hopkinsville, but they were in a, in a smaller place called Kelly, which was on the outside of, outskirts of Hopkinsville. And uh, at first, supposedly one of the family, they were on a, I think they were barbecuing, one of the family members saw a, a craft land in a, a nearby ravine or something, and they didn't, you know, pay too much attention to it. They just, just disregarded it. After a while, they, they, they saw lights outside, uh, and then when they looked out, it, they, there was um, several, what did they describe as a short beans, green in color. They seemed to glow. Uh, large ears, huge eyes, and dangling arms. They will come up to the house. Some of them will climb on top of the, the roof, get, uh, get up to the windows. There, were, there was a really a big thing because they were shot at by some of the uh, residents. And some of them, uh, they were. They say when they, they were struck by the bullet, they will fall down, roll on the ground, and get up and keep on walking. I guess they were like impervious to uh, to the bullets. And yeah, one of, hang some on. of the witnesses. Ha yeah. Hang on, just one second. So, if you are watching on uh, YouTube, um, just uh, take a look now. I put uh, a rendering of what uh, the beings look like. You'll see that up on the screen. Um, that is, if it's working. <laughs> Um, so go ahead, keep going about this. It's interesting. Yeah, and uh, some of the witnesses, and I'm looking at some of the pictures here. Well, one of the witnesses stepped out with a shotgun, and there was one of the creatures on the roof and the porch and grabbed him by the hair and pulled his hair. <laughs> and uh, he shot at it, and it, it kind of floated to the ground, but uh, apparently unharmed, and they just ran away. And these people, after a while, they couldn't take it anymore, and they ran to the police. They got into their car, and they ran to the police. Yeah, weren't they like... And, um, all night long, um, you know, waiting. Yes. Yeah. Like a siege. Yeah. yeah it was like it was actually like a siege the whole night. They were the whole. It went through, and then uh, in the Did morning. Did the military? The next day, someone yeah. wanted to know if the military ever got involved in that. There, there's rumors that they that they were that the family was uh, secret or away briefly or for a period of time by possibly government agencies and, and maybe they were interviewed or something. I don't know, but I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but there were, there's the information that possibly that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone on the message board want to know if you've, uh, have ever found any physical evidence or anyone that claims, you know, to have any physical evidence of any of these, uh, encounters. It's almost impossible. Well, uh, as physical evidence, like a what, like a, like what, like a, well, because like there's, say, there's uh, always. I know there's yeah. a, I know there's a number of renderings, but has anyone ever, uh, you know, taken a picture that couldn't be, uh, you know, basically debunked? Well, there's there's been a lot of photos of supposedly entities and and uh, humanoids. Like most photos are such a, a creature or humanoid for some reason they. they they're either grainy or you can't really see anything, but some of them are like uh, the Stella Stella Lansing photos up in, the, and where is she from? I think Massachusetts. She Back in the late 60s, she took some photos, and they, they could see some figures there, but uh, they're few and far between. They're, the worldwide, there's been, most of them are uh, obviously fake. Most of the stuff you see now on the Internet is fake, all those videos. I mean, I don't even bother with that, but... Uh, 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 physical evidence. I see physical evidence are like maybe landing traces, burnt the burnt grass or ground, pieces of uh, some kind of material left behind. And there's you know, but I don't, I don't think uh, as far as concrete, if you believe in the in the UFO UFO crash retrieval stories, like Roswell, maybe the government has all the answers. Yeah. Who knows? It, it could be. Uh, now, uh, what about underground has has any of that come up you know people reporting that um beings are from underground and we can ask i can either even go further and say how about any um you know there's usos is there any water sightings besides mermaids right okay yeah underground there's been a lot of uh, abductees that claim that instead of being taken to a, a spacecraft they've been taken to some kind of underground facility and some of them claim that some of these facilities are manned by by military, or U.S. military or human-type military, in connection with other aliens. But yeah, I have heard of uh, 
on the ground facility. As far of uh, as far as the uh, USO with entities, yeah, there's been some. Uh, mostly, uh, maybe they come up uh, upon a uh, floating UFO right off the coast or right off the the beach. It's floating on the water, and there's a clear dome, or and there's figures standing on top of the dome. That that type of thing. Uh, besides, like you know, the mermaid type of uh, incident. Yeah, there's been cases like that also. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, now, what about the Ariel School encounter? In Zimbabwe. Oh yeah, that was one of the most uh, it, it, amazing cases because there were so many witnesses and so many yeah. children, and even uh, some of the teachers saw that what happened. And there were, uh, and, and you know, I it, this it happened in '94, right? And yeah. it's still talked about it a lot, and it's it, it's one of the cases which I do have catalogued, you know, in one of my books. I do have it summarized in, in my book. It happened, as I believe, September 1994. Right, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, to me, I think it's, uh, personally, I think it's one of the most amazing cases. Um, and I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting Emily, one of the uh, the girls that was right up close. Um, you know, oh, yeah? This thing happened, okay. yes. I, I met her a year ago. Um, oh, wow, because there were many students there that they, they, they did drawings of the entities or the UFOs right after it happened. And uh, and to this day, they still talk about it, and they you know they haven't been able to debunk the the incident. Right, and uh, you know it really affected all, all these kids' lives differently. Some have you know moved on and not made it much of their life, um, but it really has affected that. And a friend of mine is you know has been editing and working on this uh, great movie about this uh, now for years. I think seven oh, yeah. years now, um, but he's interviewed you know. Uh, a really a, a good deal of the children um, in recent times. You know, and they're all they're in their twenties. Uh, right well, there were supposedly uh, like sixty-two of them children. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Sixty-four, sixty-two. 62. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that to me is one of the most incredible cases, and in, uh, you know, just the telepathic messages that they seem to receive um, is, uh, you know, can give you the shivers when you think about it. A lot of these messages are warnings of uh, right. what's what's coming up in the future, and then and these warnings have been heard by witnesses all over the world: Russia, Canada, U.S., Spain. And you know, if you look at them, I mean, people, uh, I don't think we we pay any any heed, any you know, we don't pay attention. I think right. we're, we're being warned by for some reason, uh, and I think there might be some really drastic changes, Earth changes coming up. I yeah. don't know. I don't. I don't. Know, I don't know. I'm not saying next year or tomorrow, maybe, but soon. That's, yeah. Well, I, I even, have a feeling. Uh, soon, as far as uh, our time goes, is is uh, could be in even a hundred years. A hundred years sounds like a long time, but it's not really. <laughs> you no. know that uh, you know something could uh, change. So yeah, I agree. I hope. Uh, uh, you, you know, there was a a number of these messages that that people have gotten in. In your recollection, uh, how? early have you heard of uh, cases where there was some type of heed uh, some type of warning even even in the um, in the early contactees in the 50s or you know some of them you know and I'm gonna I don't gonna judge uh, maybe they had some real experiences mostly were like fake like you know some, yeah you can see now but uh, a lot of these people that reported encounters in the even in the early in the 50s there was always some kind of message saying that back then there was a lot of uh, uh, stay away from uh, stop uh, stop the use of uh, atomic weapons or, right. or and then that, that's how it started. And uh, now it has to do a lot with climate change. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the cases encounters back in the ninety eighty nine in Russia, a, a lot of the entities told uh, the witnesses that in in the year in two in two thousand after two thousand. Uh, one or or ten that there's going to be a lot of look at look at the weather how it's been and it's true i think all of that's coming true mm -hmm. every year the weather is just stranger right yeah yep um uh, there's a lot of denial about that too but uh you know oh. i think we are messing with it and uh anyway do you know of any uh any of the encounters where there were actually uh the mortalities there, there's been some cases in which uh, uh, 
the witnesses for some reason the, the after the encounter they they get sick and they die right away or in a, in a couple of weeks and they they think that there's a connection there's a famous case in Brazil from 1946 and this farmer he didn't really see an object he 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 saw a beam of light that came down from the sky and it struck him hmm. right in full body and this guy almost immediately started getting sick he, he his whole body just fell apart he is he started vomiting black uh, blood i mean blood black and his is like his all the most of his uh muscles started deteriorating and he died like almost the same night this is a uh, uh back in uh, i believe march 1946 in brazil now oh yeah uh, what uh, uh, is that uh, that the one where he was sleeping like in a shack and the light came in yeah, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that was and a the lights, brutal. And the one. light struck right. him. Yeah. yeah, and there was another guy up in uh, Colombia, which same thing. He, he, this is in '69. Uh, it was he, there was a UFO that landed. Some kids approached the UFO, and this guy approached the UFO for some reason. The light struck him, and he died a couple of days later. It was some kind of um, the doctor could only describe it as a some kind of cancer. Or, blood to relate to the blood that that was really fast that yet you know something really really fatal hmm. and there's like uh, other cases with uh, some kids approached a ufo in peru and they were burnt and and a couple of them died but you know thankfully there's not you don't hear too many of those but if uh, i will give an advice i wouldn't rush up to if you see a ufo or something that an entity i wouldn't rush up to them yeah that's for sure yeah, I remember asking Travis Walton, I said, how, how could you just jump out of the truck and run up to that thing? It's pretty amazing. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I, you know, I say that, but maybe I, if I see something close up to me like that, I'll try to go up to it. But I don't think it's a good idea. I'll leave that up to you. Um, the uh, Men in Black. Now, um, a lot of people have said, you know, from, you know, description that they don't seem human. Is this anything that you've kind of put in the bundle of uh, humanoid, or uh, is that a whole separate category for you? No, I, I include them in my humanoid reports, yeah, the men in black. And I think they're different types. I, I think some of them really look bizarre. They, they, some of them are this type of entities that, like a lot of the witnesses describe that they're, they seem to be wearing makeup. Mm. Like to cover, like I guess to cover white. their features, yes, or even lipstick, even wigs, and they look completely bizarre, odd, and they walk like maybe like a, like a ro robot, and they talk, you know. But some of them are more human-like, and they seem to be more at ease and uh, more human. They don't seem to be need be needing to wear the makeup. So I don't know. Maybe there's two different two different types of men in black, also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, Nick Redfern did a book on women in black too. Yeah, so there's some, yeah, excellent book. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, some of that um, as well. And uh, yeah. so, what other types of uh, uh, now? Here's something I, I just thought of, and I don't think anyone's ever talked about it. No one's ever seen a like a UFO and then a men in black immediately. It's always like days after or something like that, isn't it? Either that or maybe, uh, yeah, a couple of days after. Maybe the, the witness see, sees a UFO or a disc or whatever, and then a couple of days later or, or maybe the next day. Or... That's it. But yeah. uh, I, I don't see, I, I don't I don't remember cases of, uh, uh, you mean a, a man in black inside the UFO or next to the UFO? Or is that what yeah, or, or just like uh, um, like they possibly exited one, exited out of one or something. Oh, maybe those cars that were driving out of those UFOs back then, and the, maybe those were uh, men in black. But I, no, I, I haven't. I can't think of one right off the top of my head. No. Ah, yeah. Okay. No. Uh, so in the forum, there was a question: Have you ever encountered a report of any bluish colored, uh, similar to grays, like the, but a bluish or, I think uh, something was uh, related to Eisenhower at some point. Bluish type of humanoids, yeah, glowing. Some of them are glowing blue. Some of them are bluish tint to their their skin. Yeah, there, there there's the, several of those cases in my in my uh, in my database also. Bluish type of humanoids, and not all of them are gray or green. They're you know different colors. 
right, right. But yeah, I heard I heard of the bluish type of humanoids. Now there's another type that everybody's talking about. I'm surprised you haven't mentioned it. The the B case, the black eyed kids. Yeah. What do you think about those? Oh yeah, so that's another thing. Um, I, I I don't I tend not to include those in my summaries, but it, uh, sometimes uh, some of the, I I have some of, some of those in there already because they're just too weird. I don't know what they are. Uh, I don't I can't say they're extraterrestrial. I I doubt it. I don't know. Uh, what do you think? You have any thoughts on that? No, I mean I you know I've heard about the encounters. Uh, they sound really scary. It sounds like uh, yeah. something that would be thought of in a nightmare, but. Uh, uh, you know, it re yeah, it reminds me of vampires when they they can't get in your house. They ask they ask to have permission to get in, so they knock on the door. Can we come in? And right, right. for some reason, they can't come in if you don't tell them, you don't let them come in, or if you don't say yes, come in. I don't know. How weird. It's kind of weird. Right, right. Now, someone wanted to know in the message board: uh, Is there like a percentage of uh, like good versus bad? Um, you know, humanoids that people are claiming to encounter. There's definitely some some humanoids that they have an evil aura to them that you could sense they're not good. I mean, I, I think we have that instinct in us as humans. Mm -hmm. Back in the we were cavemen that we could sense that something's not good that we and then we go into a uh, protection mode. We and I think a lot of people that suddenly get that f overwhelming fear when they encounter uh, some kind of entity. Are faced with uh, maybe an entity that might might harm them. You know, we we read those books by De Paulite, Paulitus, Paulitus, of people that disappear in, uh, in you know the oh, yeah. national forest and the, you know a lot of those people. What you don't know what happened to them? Maybe they were taken by the and, and never they were never returned. They were adopted. I mean, not abducted, but they were not returned. Maybe they were taken permanently. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, someone was just asking about, we've already covered the uh, interdimensional, um, and that's uh, all a possibility, as you're, you're saying. Um, now, the West Hall uh, case in, uh, in Australia, I don't think that had humanoids in it, did it? Were that's another case. Uh, well, in, in Australia, with a lot of, a lot of uh, kids were involved, a lot of, uh, right. a lot of uh, yeah, daytime cool sightings, yeah. students. But I don't think there were any it, beings. It was just the craft themselves, as far as I remember. As far as I remember, there's no description of beings. Some of them claim maybe there was an abduction, uh, uh, you know, maybe an abduction, but I, I haven't really gotten any information about that. But as far as I know, there wasn't any beings reported in the craft or near the craft. Yeah. Um, you know, when um, I've heard people that are, you know, I mean, it's good to be skeptic of, you know, a lot of the stories. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, when uh, someone like Michael Shermer, I talked about him earlier, when Michael Shermer is uh, uh, asked about any of this, he'll say, oh, it goes back to the fairies and the goblins and the, you know, the things uh, through time. There's always been something. Um, and then you can al also look at that same uh, point of view as, yeah, there maybe there has always been something. <laughs> You know, yeah. Uh, now you know if fairies and goblins, they're still being seen. I mean, there's still cases of people that see that something that looks like a a goblin or a fairy or an elf. It's not like it, not just in the Middle Ages. There, there's a t tons of cases. Uh, maybe in the, in the 50s, even in the 90s, for cases of creatures that you would look. It, like a leprechaun. There's, I have a lady that talked to me in, in, over the phone about a leprechaun that she found in her bedroom. One, <laughs> not found that, that she was asleep and uh, woke up and there was something that looked like a, you know, like what you would describe a leprechaun standing in her uh, bedroom hmm. with a beard. But it, it, for her, it looked like e it was kind of evil. Uh, Maybe like just like the movie, but but uh, but uh, she sounded very uh, serious about it, and uh, you know, and she said it, it disappeared. But I had I have heard of other cases of people encountering uh, leprechaun type entities. Yeah, uh, I don't know. And also, you know, I mean, the angels is another thing that uh, people talk about or have talked about. Um, you know what they consider to be an angel, and it you know is this all perception or is this you know there's there's actually people actually seeing things or 
Uh, I mean, you know, you know, you know, maybe it's perception because I know of maybe cases where people see a tall blonde humanoid and they, they think it's an angel. They think that's what the angel is supposed to look like. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's what you maybe that's what your your religious beliefs come into play. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Watch your watch your tapping there. Um, someone Oops, just uh, brought up the uh, you know the Edgar Mitchell Free Organization. Um, I'm yes. not sure. If, yeah. And uh, there's statistics there on the commonalities of alien types. Um, have you looked into any of that to see if you see any similar? Um, you know, I I know describing. I know Ray uh, personally. The guy that. The, oh yeah. That founded the Hernandez. The Hernandez. Free. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hernandez. Yeah. I met him a couple times. Uh, I have not directly. I've been trying to get access to the database. But I gotta meet him personally again, uh, so I could do that. Uh, I haven't been able to. Uh, been able to, and uh, I'm kind of been remiss. To the, uh, I gotta call him and see who, if I can get together with him, so I could maybe exchange information with him. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, someone wanted to know about the, and I can't even pronounce it. Uh, Var uh, Varginha UFO incident. Oh, Bar Varginha. That was what they called the Brazilian Roswell. Oh, it happened in, uh, yeah, it was okay. a, a, yeah. Cra a crash retrieval, very well uh, documented by a lot of a lot of uh, researchers in Brazil. It happened in '96 in January, and uh, there was a uh, supposedly a crash of a large uh, uh, cigar-shaped object, and then later the next day, some uh, girls out in the woods uh, near their home in, in Barhindia saw some. The, several strange creatures that, that they were seen to be hiding in the woods and the military was called in apparently uh, they were they captured them and even and they saw a report that one of the soldiers died during the incident but it is a, a very well documented case in brazil mm. mm -hmm. they call it the brazilian roswell yeah yeah um yeah. and is that the one where the, it looked like a devil is that, is that well they had like their heads looked like they had ridges like that, like yeah. uh, the Klingon, like that, similar. And they were short, <laughs> and they were not gray. <laughs> they had large, large eyes, but the, the, yeah, they they have like Klingon-like riches in their head, like three of them. They were kind of, I mean, definitely uh, strange-looking humanoids. I haven't heard of that description too much. Yeah, and uh, I'll, were a lot of these cases that you've looked into, would you consider whatever the beings were? in uh, like a, a higher intelligence than us uh, you know I mean you'd have to think that if they actually traveled to get here somehow whatever way they got here from wherever they came from uh, I mean you would think you would you would you would think so yeah that most of them are so advanced some of them even tell us that they're like thousands of years ahead of us uh, but then some of them don't act that way I mean I don't know, but I, I think I think that yeah, I think most of them are are possess a, an intelligence greater than we do. Maybe they 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 some of them look at us like we're still cavemen, or or maybe they look at us like we're uh, uh, lab rats or ants. Who knows? Yeah, well, we are. I think in some ways we are pretty primitive. You know? Yeah, uh, I think so you know, too. We've got a lot of uh, social growing to do for without blowing ourselves up if we're lucky enough um and uh let's see i just wanted to uh just ask you you know can you throw out some other really uh strange encounters just uh give us some of the cases uh that were really really unusual or or believe you know some of them that were pretty believable as well or and let, go ahead. Okay, let me see let me get my file with some i i in the file is some of the ones that were sent to me directly. All right, before uh, yeah, before you do yeah. that, um, can you tell us is there any like a known figure, historical figure besides I know Columbus? Uh, I saw that in your book, but is there any other like really well known figure that actually went on the books to actually say say they saw something? As far as well known, maybe maybe not, but maybe he's well known in his country. I I, I know a case that I got recently. The uh, the uh, Dominican ambassador to the Vatican, <laughs> maybe you know he's very famous in the Dominican Republic. But back in 1974, he was uh, involved in a close encounter with a landed UFO, and where he lived in the Dominican Republic. His name is Victor Grimaldi. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You can look him up in the internet. He's not going to. I mean, the story came out in a newspaper and a, a, an account that was sent to me, and I translated it. But he's now the the current ambassador to the Vatican, and and there's been a, you know other people. Maybe they they remain anonymous. They don't want to. But uh, I mean, there's 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 witnesses. You have police officers. You have uh, all kinds of uh, witnesses to these encounters uh, throughout the you know the the years and be it here or in Canada, Australia, but there's a lot of uh, law enforcement people involved in the encounters because they, you know, the time of uh, night, I mean, the time when they work at night a lot. Uh, I know a couple uh, that, you know, used to work with me that I know personally that were in, had encounters, you know. Hmm. Wow. And, I, you know, they're, they're pretty uh, uh, logical human beings and they... And, yeah, I can. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, one of the questions that came up on the message board was, uh, "What would you consider uh, the average agenda for the being uh, to be here?" Like that. Like some people say, that maybe they're always been here with us. Uh, and, uh, uh, as far as an agenda, maybe they're they're they're, they're here. Uh, some people say maybe they're looking after us or maybe they're trying to prevent something from happening. I'm not sure. Maybe there's some others that are they're not so uh, kindly uh, to, towards us. And maybe there's some of them uh, that they're trying, trying to prevent them. Maybe there's a struggle between different types and uh, we're stuck in the middle. I, I'm not sure. Uh, all, I, all I have is uh, theories. Right. Yes. No. Uh, how about... How about uh, uh, Someone wanted to know also the, any morphing. You know, I mean, that makes me think of werewolves. <laughs> but I mean, well, yeah, like that. The case I mentioned earlier here in Miami, the lady I spoke to, she said to uh, encounter a female humanoid in her home that then morphed in, into a reptilian <laughs> type creature right in front of her eyes. And there's been cases like that. There's a, 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 a researcher in Israel. In 1997, I had a case in which uh, a couple woke up to see two little men, uh, similar to the you know the graves and the large heads. Uh, the eyes weren't that big, and then these these all of a sudden when they were discovered in the house, they, they morphed into uh, tall Nordics. Wow. <laughs> I was kind of, I found that case kind of weird. Yeah, back in '97. Uh, yeah, there there's cases like that, morphing. Yeah. I think I'm going to try, uh, I'm going to attempt to take a phone call if someone would like to call in, and uh, I'll give that number out. I'll put it in the chat. There's plenty of people in the chat room. I'm going to give that number out. And what might have to happen is I might have to interrupt you just for a second. I might have to take the call, get their question, and then... Uh, sure. Because I, I'm not sure. Sometimes I can join the call. Sometimes I can't. Um, so okay. anyway, um, that's just a thought. Okay. Okay, so I just put the number in the uh, chat room there. Uh, and uh, uh, what is your, uh, the future for, are you just going to keep writing as the years go by? Um, you know, because you said well, you're up to 2015. Yeah, I, I'm still collecting cases, but I'm only collecting cases from uh, 2015 down. Uh, I, I stopped collecting from 2016 or 17. I, I, I haven't collected any for these years. But I, I plan uh, writing other books, different, you know, dealing with humanoids, but different with the new cases that I get daily. Uh, I'll do that. I'm working in a couple already. Uh huh. Is uh, are you uh, are you thinking about researching other type of things as well besides? You know, humanoids, I, or is that kind of your niche? Well, that's my mostly that, but I am uh, looking into cases in which uh, people disappear permanently, like I was talking about earlier, and they're, they're never seen again, and there's a, a definite uh, um, connection to UFOs or humanoids. There are some cases like that. I'm working on that. Yeah. You mentioned David Pallides. uh Books, yeah. Yeah. He's... Uh, that's all. That's a fascinating topic. Um, it is yeah. how uh, people have just you know vanished or all these strange things that can't be explained 
Um, I think it's really interesting where he never takes an opinion on exactly what happens. He because he doesn't want to. I, no, I think he, that's he, actually he a good idea. Really, yeah. <laughs> Even you know he, he he has books he has written books about Bigfoot before. That's yeah, right. So, yep. Yeah. And, so he's uh, a Bigfoot guy. You know he's a MUFON investigator. You know I mean, he's been also. In, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so has your. It sounds like you know quite a bit about UFOs. Uh, you know cases as well. So you kind of researched a lot of that. Yeah, I'm, I've been uh, like I said. I started with uh, the U, the UFO books. Like you know they mentioned the light in the sky, the disc. And then uh, that really intrigued me. And then I started reading cases about little men or humanoids, and that really, I, I mean, I, I was never, I was hooked then. I was, um, been a lifelong uh, task, ending, never ending task. Yeah. Have you been able to get, um, get your files? You said you were going to grab some files and read some of the really interesting cases. Yeah, I believe. Uh, let me see. One second. See about that. Sure. There's this. This is the cases that uh, that the witness contacted me directly. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Some of them. Uh, this is case. Uh, this is from England, the UK. Uh, a place called Barking, like a bar like a dog barking. Uh -huh. Essex. Uh, the witness. I have the initials M R. Uh, had gone to bed while his wife was visiting her friend uh, with their daughter. He had a small, you know, dimly lit lamp in his bedroom. And for some reason, when he went to bed, he was feeling kind of apprehensive. He wasn't sure why. And he, as he lay there facing the window, he suddenly felt someone sit uh, at the edge of the bed. He sat straight up <laughs> and then to see uh, a humanoid-looking female sitting at the edge of the bed. As he looked at her, he felt like somehow he knew her. But he was afraid. He still he still felt afraid. The, this humanoid female used a hand motion, apparently telling the witness to calm down, using a hand. According to him, she was wearing a tight-fitting gray suit with a black belt around her waist. She had black eyes with blonde hair and was staring at, at the witness. And then as he stared at her at him, I mean, this has gone on for a couple minutes already, so he, you, know, you know he cannot be a sleep paralysis. She suddenly, she suddenly vanished in plain sight. Uh, he thinks that uh, he said that if he thinks that if he would not shown fear, he thinks the contact might have lasted a little longer than that. It was fascinating. He saw a humanoid. Uh, maybe this is a maybe a type of Nordic. Not, not really. I don't mm. know. Mm. But uh, interesting. And this is yeah. another uh, sent to me by a witness in Pennsylvania, Sterling. A place called Sterling, it's a little town, Wayne County. Mm -hmm. uh, she was, uh, she has an other encounter, but look, this is kind of fascinating. She was uh, doing some chores in the kitchen. She looked out the window, there was a snow covered field behind her home. This is, I think this is 2009, March, and I guess there was still snow there. And she spotted what she described to me as three tall, black, like stick stick-like figures you know we were talking about that earlier two-dimensional type uh -huh. they were like walking sticks walking side by side in unison they were moving very fast and very uh, quick and they were very quickly lost from sight in the, into the woods but she was like uh, so, so so you know she was like uh, baffled because she says she couldn't uh, figure out what kind of creature could that be that looked like a walking stick three of them wow and she went over, over there to check for traces with a friend, and and when she went to the location, she they they smelled some kind of odor, like uh, something burning, but they didn't see any traces. This is back in uh, two thousand and nine. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Well, keep going. If you could, you have some other ones right there. All right. Uh, let me let me see. Some of them are kind of long. I don't want to, you know, too long. Well, we've got, you know, we've got about 15 minutes left, so we've got okay. plenty, of, plenty of time here. Okay, this one uh, this one was sent to me by, um, ah, hold on, sorry. Okay, this is the, the one I mentioned earlier, uh, and from Spain. It was sent directly to me by, by the witness. Uh, he was in two friends that were out there in, uh, in, uh, exercising in the woods uh, with a knight, and 
they they saw uh, first they saw like a, a sphere, a luminous sphere, uh, about the quarter size of the moon. It ascended over over them, and they they you know they were like for some reason they ignored it. They they had let it go, and then all of a sudden they felt like a, a big powerful what they described to me a, an electric current. A minute later, the large sphere vanished behind the woods, and then a, a smaller sphere uh, appeared that seemed to detach itself from the, the larger one. And at this point, they were curious about it, and they, they walked over to the location. And when the, once they reached a, um, a point there in the woods, they, they smelled something like sulfur, very strong, a sulfuric mm. uh, odor. And the temperature uh, around them seemed to uh, to rise. It seemed to get hot, hotter. Uh, uh, the main witness, the one I spoke to, the, he decided to to go ahead of his friends. He ran ahead for some reason. While well, the others behind him, they were screaming at him to stop, not to go. Once he did, he this is when he came upon a, uh, a he, what he described a gigantic figure. Mm. Over th- he said over three to four meters tall. That was standing behind uh, one, uh, like a, there was a wall there. And there was a, a glow around the figure that was bright gold, gold and yellow. He stared in disbelief at the figure, and he said the figure was dark, mostly dark. He appeared to be wearing some type of clothing, but uh, he, he was too dark to tell. Terrified, he ran from from that. the area. Uh, as they ran, he, his friends followed him. Uh, they 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 said that as they ran, they felt like they were running through. Spider webs. They were like, like their movements were kind of restricted for some reason. They couldn't, wow. they couldn't tell why, because it was like nothing. They couldn't see anything around them. And then they, they left. Uh, apparently, these a couple of these witnesses later on experienced like strange phone calls to their home and other kind of weird, weird details. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, we got time for a couple more. <laughs> really, yeah, really okay, liking this. Yeah, I like this. Here's is, another weird, good. really weird one. Uh, from Belgium, February 1974. He was sent to me by a researcher that he, unfortunately, he has already passed. Uh, Roger Lorthor. He was a, a Belgian researcher. But anyway, this is back in after. This is a gas station attendant. Uh, in the afternoon, late afternoon, so it wasn't at night or anything like that. He stepped out for a moment, and was confronted by an incredible sight, according to him. He said over a nearby field, about 20 meters away, the, he saw what what he could only describe was a, a look a, a transparent egg-shaped craft that was ringed in uh, multicolored lights with four larger principal lights at each end. It was silent and it had no apparent means of propulsion. He couldn't see any engines or anything like that, and he was hovering like a meter from the ground, no noise or anything. But the the incredible thing was inside the craft. This is what he saw. He, he appeared to be an, a naked, giant, human-like figure, about three meters in height, apparent, apparently reclining on a brown, what he, he described only as a couch or a couch-like device. This person, with whatever that was, naked, three meters tall, were reclining on a uh, couch, on a brown couch type. Not exactly a couch, but he, just, he could only describe right, it as that. Hold on just one minute. Sure. I'm going to try to take this call. Uh, it may hang up on it won't hang up on you. It might put you on hold. Hang on. Hello, caller. Hey, Martin. This is Tom out of Pittsburgh. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing good. You know what? Unfortunately, I'm not able to add the call for some reason. So, uh, Ed, uh, Albert is on hold right now. So, basically, why don't you throw your question out there, and, and I'll uh, basically relay it to him. Sure. Um, the biggest thing I always thought about, um, especially in the research that I have done, um, and a lot of the books and documentaries I've, uh, I've watched and read, my, my biggest thing I always wanted to know, and your guess, uh, uh, what his opinion is, is what, is he, what does he believe the overall agenda for them visiting our planet and, and kind of visiting the way they do, uh, especially with abductions and whatever dealings they have with our government, and what has transpired between them and our government to keep to disclosure and not really talk about it. Okay, and uh, so I will, I will pass that along to him. I know that he did mention, um, uh, he did talk a bit about the what he thought the agenda was 
uh, earlier. But uh, I will pass. Oh, okay. I will pass that on to him. Thanks so much for the call. Oh, no and, problem, guys. Have a great night. All right. Okay. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. Let's see if I can. Uh, Albert, are you there? I'm here. Yes. Well, so he basically wanted to know uh, what you know what the agenda was. He's he's done a lot of research himself. Uh, the gentleman that was just on. And uh, he also wanted to know um, if there was any, like, government interaction or if there was uh, that you're aware of uh, uh, what your the thoughts of uh, the government would be about uh, certain beings. Uh, well, I may not be relaying like, that correctly, but you know, along well, that maybe, line. Maybe he means that there's a, uh, there's a government uh, connection that maybe they're working together with certain type of beings. Uh, yeah. That I'm not sure. I know there's been uh, some witnesses I've described encounters uh, on board a, a UFO with both aliens and what appear to be humans that working in t together with the aliens. Uh, now these government, they're military. I don't know, but some of them seem to be. Uh, I, I, you know, I have no no theory on that. I, I don't know if it's really happening. Yeah, are you talking about Clifford Stone? Is that who I'm thinking of that says something like that? Yeah, I read about Clifford Stone. There's many, many researchers or, uh, you know, that claim that or that, that are convinced that that's really happening. I mean, I don't know. I won't, maybe I won't, I won't doubt it. Maybe there is there is a certain uh, government uh, uh, people are doing it. Maybe not the whole government. I don't know. Right. Um, someone uh, just wanted to say thank you in the chat room. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike Blake, he says, thank you for writing these books. And you really, oh, Mike. Um, yes, I know Mike. Okay. Oh, you know Mike. Um, you know it's, it's really. A, I was talking to someone about this the other day. You know, it's basically a passion. I mean, it's not a money making. I, I bet you haven't made a lot of money on your books. And that's, no, a couple, uh, a couple of dinners here and there. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> the big misconception uh, that people have, you know, uh, for the most part, is that. Uh, oh wow! You know he's an author. You know he's he's making a lot of money on this, so it's a it could be BS that type of thing. But you know you don't make money, but yet you keep writing books. Fifteen books. Fifteen um, books, yeah. And um, if anyone out there has uh, ever tried to write a book, just one book, um, getting in you know the first few chapters is, uh, you know it's it's a chore. It's not easy. I was helped a lot by my editor. Uh... Uh, Ash Daunton. Uh, I had a lot of the material already written. I just didn't know what to do with it, and I was I was finally convinced to put it into book into book form by several people, mostly Ash. And uh, here it is. After uh, and a year or so, it's been 15 volumes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, let's see. There was uh, someone wanted to ask a question, and I just lost it. So, I, you know, we still have, a, you know, at least five minutes left. And uh, when you were doing this, um, what do you think is the most far out? If you had to pick the most far out case that uh, maybe something you almost didn't even want to put in the book, uh, I want to hear it. If you can think of it. Well, that, that one I was talking about, that, about the naked giant inside of the transparent egg craft, that was kind of weird. He, <laughs> he, he said he had a... Human features, short black hair, and then the, the couple other witnesses came out and saw it, and it just floated away. Uh, that was kind of weird. It's just so many. I, I I can't think of one that I know. There's many, right? But right now at this moment, there's just so much information. The funny thing is, uh, I, right after I got that case from uh, Belgium, there's another case from from uh, Italy, very similar. There are a, lot, a couple of different details, but this is from Messina province in, in Italy, a place called Tonarella, 66. Uh, okay, this is a young woman that was uh, in her house. And she looked out the window of uh, her apartment and located in the center of town and, and spotted with something luminous like a, that was quickly approaching her location from, uh, from the direction of the uh, southwest part of town. As it got closer, uh, she said the luminous object began to assume a cylindrical shape, also transparent. And then the, the, she watched the cylinder-shaped object uh, approach even closer to her location. She said that the cylinder was illuminated uh, from within by a 
hom homogeneous hom homogeneous light, and the craft then then descended to within uh, several meters from the from the ground, about f 50 meters away from her, and uh, she could hear a low uh, motor like sound. She couldn't tell exactly what it was, but this is the this is the weird thing, just like the Belgian case. So inside the the object, the transparent object, it was visible a a male, a human like figure that appeared to be floating. This guy was floating in a vertical position inside the object. I know uh, this guy was weird looking. He said the, she, the figure was about maybe 1.70 meters. Maybe I think what's that was that almost six feet in height. And well, the, and the cylinder was to be only about three meters in height. Okay, the eyes were closed. He had his eyes closed and he was totally immobile. He wasn't moving. What she thought was he was meditating. And the facial features are, are funny, are strange. He said they were human-like, and he had like a very long gray beard. Mm -hmm. And that gave him uh, the appearance of an elderly, uh, you know, person, uh, elderly guy, just like me, with a beard. And uh, the, the humanoid figure was wearing a one-piece red tunic-type garment. And <laughs> this is, this is and what appeared to be sandals on his feet. She was very impressed that the large silvery, and he had a. Uh, she was impressed that he had a large silvery, silvery medallion in the chest area, shaped like a circle, with an iridescent spot in the middle. And she, uh, she was looking at it. The craft suddenly shot away, quickly disappearing from sight, and again becoming a luminous spot in the into the distance. This is uh, from an Italian researcher. No. So you you compare both cases, the Belgium case and this Italian. So it's kind of fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Hey, the one uh, the one encounter that uh, I, I really like a lot is just it's um, is the Jan Woliski. Do you know that uh, Wolski? Wolski in Poland. Yeah. Yeah. Poland, yes, of course. Yes, that guy was abducted and.